Good morning, everybody. Thanks for showing up that early on a Sunday. I will give my best not to bore you. So um, I will talk about two open source products we are using in our company. The first is uh, Minogo Search uh, from a Russian company. And the second also uh, coming from Russia is Sphinx for searching your MySQL databases. It's about, uh, we have 28 slides, so um, it will last about 45 minutes. So if you have questions, we have time at the end. So why search? Time is money. Uh, if you run a website, you know the faster your pages load, the better they convert. That means conversion visitors to money. That's the relation visitors to money you earn. So the faster you present your content, morning, take a seat, come in and look out. No, that's web search. Okay, the, the second information is power. Um, just think of the, the Amazon uh, feature of the users who bought this, also bought that. That's potentially uh, important data and also has effect on your conversions on your website. And there's much more information you can dig up uh, if your search is running fast and, and good. So, and the third thing is that size matters means for me, um, we're drowning in data at the moment. Uh, our site that we run is uh, TradeBit, a download marketplace where everybody can upload and sell files. And we have currently over 10 million files in the database. And it's constantly changing. People are updating their files, deleting, uploading new files. Um, and that is a lot of data that has to be indexed and presented. So the purpose of search uh, in the definition, um, if you look it up, you have two purposes, what your people, what your, what your surface could, could look for. The first one is just a navigational search. Think of TruePal, uh, the tags, um, show me the related documents for my search, or a research search that you want to, um, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, give me some suggestions. Um, we talked with our Belgium guests yesterday about semantic search. Um, neither Minogo nor, nor Sphinx are really semantic search engines. They're just pure indexing and um, presenting tools. So, because they're a bit different, um, you have to think about what you want to do with these tools. Morning. Minogo is more for uh, if you run a several sites that you want to have indexed and searched, uh, like on your intranet, if you have like news.yourcompany.net, documentation, yourcompany.net, and you want to have that searchable for the outside world or inside your company, Monogo is probably the best choice uh, to do so. If you run e-commerce sites or uh, news sites, a huge blog hosting on a MySQL, Postgres, or XML base, uh, you might want to use Sphinx. Let me show you how and why. So the first product I want to look into is Monogo. Here's uh, the feature highlights of Monogo. Uh, it runs on MySQL, Oracle, and basically every other database via ODBC. It spiders with uh, its index program, HTTP protocol, HTTPS, um, news, FTP files, and even files on the file system means you can let the spider run and give the URLs to spider and are redirected uh, onto your file system. Some people use it for mirroring uh, open source projects. Uh, instead of uh, wget, you know that program, I'm sure. Um, it has external interfaces for parts you, can, you might plug in for passing PDF or other pro proprietary formats. Um, it supports stemming and synonyms, stop words, etc. You've got an HTML template that you might customize. And it has APIs for PHP, CGI. Uh, it's not an API, but it has, you might access the, the search engine via PHP. It comes as a CGI installation uh, as a standard, but you have also uh, libraries for C. And what is important, and I added that, um, is you're running it as an intranet spider. So you might tell the, the spider where to log in 
with uh, which credentials. So if you have a protected site and you want to have that searched inside your company, you can tell the spider, log in there with this and that password on that port. It's supported. By the architecture, um, you install your databases. You, you might cluster them. You define that in your config file and say, okay, I want you to spider into database A, B, and C. Split that up and say, okay, build several index, in, indices on several databases. You can you feed the indexer with uh, the list of URLs. You can do that by uh, putting them into the config file. You can have that on an extra text file, or you can have that in the database. I'll show you how we organize that in a second. Um, you put in additional configs like stop words, synonyms, and then you just say go, and it spiders what, what you've um, defined in the URL source. Interesting is that it's multi-threaded, means you can start 10 spiders on the same machine, but you can also start like 10 spiders on 10 machines. It scales up to 256 concurrent uh, machines, and on each machine you might start up to 256 uh, spiders. That's quite uh, impressive, and spiders very quickly, and the spiders communicate via the database, so they pick up um, this indexer would say, I will spider now this 10,000 URLs and tell this spider via the database, don't spider these, I'm, I'm spidering the 10,000. Now take you the other 10,000. So you can spider quite quickly. To access, once you've spidered all your data together, um, you have access via, as I said, the standard installation is the CGI. And uh, you have also a uh, PHP file that you can include into your pages and access the data via that route. Yes? Quick question. The database um, is for the in indices. Where is which word? On which URL have you found which word? And it's also the complete copy of the text of the of the document. Yeah, that's stored in the database. And also the the, the current spidering state. So they communicate via the database. Hmm? So installation and configuration is uh, quite straightforward. Um, you download it from uh, monogosearch.com, and uh, you get a Linux-friendly TGC, uh, which unpacks and uh, compiles with .configure uh, seamlessly. On I've tested it on, on Ubuntu, on, on SUSE, on Send plus U. Um, if you have autoconf, automake, and uh, the GNU compiler installed. It by default installs into user local Monogo search. You might change that before you compile the packages. Now, meet the config. Um, after installation, you have an example config in indexer.conf. And um, important is if you use the access to the to the uh, to the search engine with PHP, the um, important config values are also in the search HTM. Uh, I showed that in the config. So you have your config values here and here. That's a bit strange, but that's how they're organized. So in in these config files or in the config files, you'll find quite excessive documentation of what the lines below mean. That's how I got myself into Monogo. Just read the config. Important parts of the config. Um, to show you, we have the possibility to name all your database servers by using these lines. So you say you want to use MySQL or Postgres give the password and the server address. Like we're using it on three servers at the moment. Like so we have D1, D2, and D3. And the access mode, which is uh, plop, is for using it as a cluster. I forgot the other configuration mode because I never used it. Uh, but if you run a, a single server system on a single database, you might probably want to use the, the other configuration modes, but they're explained in the, in the config. I found out for, for Blob is the only forgoable uh, road if you want to cluster it on several databases. 
it's a storage method for the for the database. And live updates, so you can change the values on the fly to allow Minogo to do so. Now here's uh, the part I've been talking about: the URLs, what to spider. Tell the indexer what to spider by uncommenting server table and put all your information in TV server. Let me change to our search engine here. So this is uh, more like a hobby project I started, uh, which is based on Minogo. And I just look for Froscon. And I get the search results. Like I defined it in the template. And I enhanced the standard template with some additional features so you can rank or enter alternative links for that result or write a block entry for that result. That's how I changed the, the standard search template. These are my extensions to that. And the values of each server is in a not so pretty um, HTML backend, but here you see the values. So somebody registered myprintcard.de, gave me a title for that catalog entry, described it, and here are the internal values. I say, okay, how deep shall the indexer go to that site? It's just one click. So it goes to myprintcard.de and clicks on every link on that page, but just one step further, and then stops spidering the site. It is enabled. It should appear in the index. You could spider and enable it, but not show it. So you put the index to a zero. You define also weights, how important is that site, so I could change the ranking for, um, for these URLs. And I say, um, I give a, a flag to follow. These values are the same values that, will that you will find in the config file. That means follow to is just on that site. Do not follow outside links. Yeah? If you put in the three, it would just follow every link it finds to every location and start spidering the world. Yeah? You have to be very careful with that value. If you like put a, for example, into the uh, depth of uh, spidering a five and a three to the world, you would be amazed how many URLs you end up with. Yeah? Some people just link to a thousand outside lines. So another important section of the config is the external binary spiders or modules you can plug in. So tell the, the spider how to handle PDF files, picture files. You might also spider the JPEG information. How is it called? The EXIF information of photos uh, or Word documents. Um, in the document section, you can set the weight uh, of certain parts of X. DML, X HTML uh, values, for example, how important is the title, how important are the meta tags, how important is the headline tag, how important are uh, alt tags of uh, photos, etc. And the rest, timeouts, identification, proxy values, these are all found uh, in the config file. Also part of the config are the realms, so kingdoms, of, uh, of Monogo, so you can group certain um, URLs into, let's say, virtual hosts and uh, tell Monogo how to handle these. For example, this is uh, out of the config, the realm, everything that should have this within regex in its domain should be redirected to the file system in this and that directory. So you do not need to spider your own pages over the internet, but directly from the file system. Yeah? Or set aliases and say everything on HTTPS. If you do not want to use the standard Monogo HTTPS spider, you can say reroute that via my own curl script, for example. I think that should unveil the power that is behind that machine. So you can redirect everything through everything, basically. Also in the config, uh, the server wait what uh, Google tries to do with the page rank algorithm and say, okay, um, how many, that's the population rank, uh, how many documents refer to that document I just found? If it has a lot of refers, it might be more important than 
a document I, I found for that search term in another place, but where only two people are linking to, to this document 20 people are linking to, it might be more important. So that is also part of the configuration of Monogo. The tools after installation. I told you in user local Monogo search, you'll find the, the binaries and that main tool to start spidering is the indexer. So, the so steps would be download, unpack and install, do the dot slash configure, um, create the database for it, and then for the first run you need to do the create. So, the, Monogo, the indexer puts up the tables and the information it needs uh, initializes the database, basically. After the creation, you just start the indexer. If you've configured your URLs in the config, probably two or three URLs, it just spidered these URLs and starts gathering it. And after that, you have to tell the indexer to calculate the weights and the ranking. Basically, to build the index on everything that was spidered and put into the database. If you just want to test it, um, I told you with the dash dash help, um, you get a lot of options. One option is the count. That means just spider for 60 seconds and then stop. Do not stop the, the uh, indexer with uh, control C. Yeah, that gives you, might give you a corrupt database. So just tell, if you want to test something, just go indexer dash C 20 and it spiders for 20 seconds, cleans up the database and said, okay, I've, I've spidered for 20 seconds. Once you're done with that, you can use a statistics tool with capital S, which gives you a view on your database, what, what you have spidered, what is in the database, and the status of the documents. So for DigiWiki, I just showed you, uh, 2,394 documents have not been indexed. When I started that yesterday, um, 82,503 documents are okay, and uh, the rest of the HTTP status codes you might know, yeah? So this authentication or a file has been removed, et cetera. That's the, the statistics you get from the, from the search engine. Now the access from your web pages, as I, as I told you, two possibilities, CGI or PHP. I prefer PHP um, in terms of uh, organization and user flow have more influence on the um, on the appearance, as I showed you with the, with the commands or the ranking of, of URLs, it's easier for me. Other people might prefer CGI, but the process is the same. And as I told in the beginning, the config files you see in indexer.conf are reappearing in the search HTM, that's this page. You see the address of your servers. Yeah, the, uh, if the API should cache the queries, and more important, config values. So you have to change these before you can use it. Search HTM. Same with the CGI. So you search CGI is a C++ re compile result. So if you want to change that, you have to code C++. I can't do that, so I stick to PHP. That's the same concept if you want to use CGI. So conclusion, Monogo is, from my point of view, a very handy tool to spider intranet content. Um, it's easy to build a small scale search engine, maybe with up to 50 million to 100 million documents, but I doubt that it goes behind. I haven't tested it. Uh, the, the coders of Monogo say it, it could do more, but, it, but then you need much more servers, more databases and uh, to run a, a real full-scale search engine, it might be complicated to do so. Uh, I wouldn't say that I could do it with, with Monogo. I think there's a, a learning curve beyond that, but for a simple search engine, it's fast to install, it's easy to learn, and the config file is well documented, and you have your first search results uh, in less than an hour. So questions for Monogo? So let me jump over to Sphinx. Sphinx as a, as a full text search engine for MySQL, 
has a totally different concept. So this, what uh, is the same is that it needs to spider the data and index it, uh, but that's all. The feature highlights of Sphinx, it's quite fast in reading your database. It processes 10 megabyte, that's not 10 mbit, that's megabyte uh, at least. And I've tested it with, with uh, over 50 megabytes per second on a machine. I think that's really, really fast. Um, it's quite scalable with 100 million documents um, in memory. That means the references to, in the, uh, to documents in memory. Uh, it has a native MySQL support. As I said, also uh, Postgres is supported and XML streams. It does phrase proximity ranking. That means if you look uh, for uh, rock and roll, Elvis, and it has words in between, uh, it will rank how far these rock and roll and Elvis are together in a phrase. For example, if you have all the artists of rock and roll and somewhere down the list is Elvis, it might rank short, uh, might rank worse than a document that has rock and roll written by Elvis in it. Yeah, so the phrase proximity ranking uh, is quite good with things. It has ranking weights on uh, columns. You might define in your, um, in your database, okay, I have the column of songs, artists, etc., and you can put weights. So uh, the author or the artist of the song is more important than the title, for example. You can plug in stop words, like with Monogo. It has a PHP API. Um, it also, I downloaded it dot slash configure compiled without complaints. Why an extra MySQL full text search engine? Okay, the, uh, I don't know if you've played around with, with uh, SQL uh, on large data sets, but um, if you want to dig up text in a, in a text field and you do it, give me all the data where the text like Elvis, um, that gets really slow. The alternative on MySQL would be the where like clause, uh, the, um, the match against clause. So you need to put the column you're, you're looking in, like the my album description, um, to a full text column and say, okay, you're full text and I can do match against searches uh, in that column. That is much faster than where like, but gets slow beyond the 500,000, 700,000 uh, entries in that text file. And with more than 10 million, wow, uh, with more than 10 million entries, it's just unusable. For example, I've put our other site up. So this is where we sell these, these downloads. And if you look for Elvis, you see it, I hope, it will react quite fast. So this is uh, the result of the search took how long? Three, four seconds. Before we implemented Sphinx, it took 27 seconds. So that's why we needed to do something and that's how we stumbled into Sphinx, basically. Again, architecture of that tool. You want to index Spider, these sources that is supported, XML, Postgres, or MySQL. Uh, any other sources you should dump into XML if you want to index your Oracle or whatever you, you want to index. You got a binary again with the user bin indexer. You got the configuration file. That configuration file defines what to index and how to handle it. The search daemon has to run. This search daemon takes the requests, looks into the created index files, and uh, the indexer tells the search daemon where it has found what. So the search daemon is the first thing you start. When you config, no, you config everything, you start the search daemon, and then you let the indexer run. As I said, configure and make runs perfectly. Gives you the binary search daemon, the indexer, and if you want to use it on the bash, you also have the, the search command, uh, where you can look into your database directly from the command line to check your results. I will show you an example. 
Also, meet the config here. Um, things dot com, uh, the, the things dot conf um, is basically separated into two parts. It's the source definition and the index definition. Now, take a let's take a look at the source. You're probably familiar with these values, like you know from other open source packages. You define the the database host, the user, and the password port, etc. And then you define how to gather the information from which table as a plain SQL statement. You say, okay, give me everything from that. People are very familiar with uh, SQL could imagine that you can do a lot of nice requests gathering your data from the sources, like gathering data from several tables. And um, yeah. 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 Good question. Good question. But uh, here in the um, in the config file, you, you might define steps because if you like uh, have ten million documents and say give me all the ten do million documents, it really slows down the oh, SQL Server. Yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. um, question was: Is it possible to say you've got five queries, a SQL query, and um, take all of them and index them? No, but you can have so, yeah, you can have several sources. You create uh, as many index in indices uh, as you want. Sorry. Yeah. So you define probably from uh, just for tagging certain files or for the titles or for the description or for the usernames, you just create different uh, indices. So you can split up your, your SQL statements uh, to that um, purpose. Yeah? And also related to that is that you say, uh, do not collect all the data at once, but take them step by step and then make a pause. Yeah? Take a thousand results, work on these thousand results, pause for 500 milliseconds, half a second, or it, 200 milliseconds, and then get the next results from the database. That also lowers uh, the load. Uh, in our example, I've, uh, especially for that problem, um, I introduced an extra MySQL slave for that. So I got my database masters, and I have an extra slave which is spidered by Sphinx, just for that purpose. Because you're right, if you do that regularly and you want to have a real fast result match to the, um, to the updated database, so we let it run every two hours. In, in these, like, five minutes it takes to spider all the data, uh, the database gets slow. But you can solve that by, for example, an extra slave to the database. So you can, you can define group columns, so extra columns you want to sort by or order by, um, like the, the five groups, or artists, for example. So these Group columns will be available in your uh, in your in your index definition later and in the API. I'll show you that. So um, you can define post queries. What happens after you process these 1,000 files? You update counters, for example, and you tell it uh, how to get the info of one single document. That's uh, the latest really. Um, SQL statement down here, where you say, okay, this with the ID, you get the single file. That's what you define in the, in the source definitions. The counterpart for the source is the index. So every source should have an index. Yeah? You say, okay, the, the name of the source is what we've defined earlier. And you say, where should Things and that's um, the interesting part of things. It uh, indexes and, and holds all data in files. Yeah, so it needs a path for that. Um, you could uh, define where extend, um, extra document info shall be stored. You can put that externally in this path or internally into the files. Then you get y uh, huge files. You put that externally. That is uh, much better uh, because things tries to hold as much information as possible in the in the memory. So if you put that in line, it tries to also, if you have the description of the Elvis, uh, Elvis album, it will try to keep 
all that information in memory and start swapping it out if, uh, if you have too much info. So try to keep just the numeric values in memory that speeds up the, the thing even more. So, uh, like in Monogo, the uh, config file is quite well documented from my point of view. Uh, it's quite easy to understand what you can define. More complicated is the API, but I have an example for that as well. Hmm? So using the indexer uh, from the command line, you define which config to use. We tried that you see the rest of that setup here in that config line. Um, we have several config files for different databases. Okay, let's take one of the masters and test it, or take the local slave to test it, so we created several uh, config files just to, to test exactly that problem. The search daemon takes the requests and looks into the index files. And while you spider, or while you index the, uh, the sources, um, it, it wouldn't be possible to use the search daemon. That would give you like five minutes without any index, that's bad. And that's what this command is for. Use the old index until I'm finished. Yeah? So you can still send search requests to the search daemon. And uh, when the indexer is finished with indexing the new index, it just rotates the old one out. And that happens then quickly. OK, this was the call of the indexer. It reads the config file, goes through our tags of the files, collects 1.5 million documents uh, altogether, pure text, because it's just the, the, the tags of the files, like Elvis, rock and roll, song, music, MP3, etc. Uh, that sums up to 22 um, megabytes. And it sorted 5.4 million single words, like rock, N, roll, yeah? and um, it's read, uh, how much is that? One or two bytes per second. And processed uh, 86,000 documents per second. Then it's rotating, and it took 17 seconds to do so. OK, that's on a, a dual core machine with, with two gigabyte RAM. Then you can use and search through that index um, with the search command I told you about. Again, you have to tell the search command where the config is. And where do you want to search um, the search term? You could just search in a specific index. Then you would define that index here between the search term and the config. Or you search in all your indices for that word. Okay, and it tells me the index trait, because that's the only index I had in that config file. Um, returned 1,000 matches and gives you the results here. Okay, let's, um, let's dive into these results because I, I mentioned that in the, in the config file. I told you about the group columns, right? You see the group columns here again. The file group ID, so this is probably four, as I think, 4,000 for us is uh, ebooks. And um, the other one here, file group ID 3014 is probably our three is for us MP3 category, and 14 might be rock and roll. So I know, okay, this was found in that file group. And um, it gives me the user ID who is the owner of that file. So this is probably, I don't know, ebook seller, and this is one of our music sellers. And it gives me the rest of the information. What is also here and what I deleted because it was too long, it also showed me the title and the, the full text description. I think we have time for um, to take a look directly live into the system if you want to see it. Okay. <laughs> Where, where is the terminal? Ah, here. Oops. Ah. 
So I'm on our Sphinx machine. No, I'm actually light. I'm on the wrong machine. Sphinx is here. <laughs> So I'm on the Sphinx client where the database is running. You see here our major database, that's the slave database of our files. And I should have it in the bash history. So this is the, the search command with the config and the search term. And I pipe it to more so we can see the result. You see it instantly answers and tells the details. That is basically uh, the result of the select of a single document. So you get, I get all the values from the select. Even um, if I scroll down, the name Elvis Presley, oh, that was a wallpaper. The Elvis Presley wallpaper collection with uh, the, the text out of the description. Okay. So that was the extended example of, of that search tool. As I told you, it also has a PHP API uh, where you define uh, the, 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 the indices where you want to search and how to handle the group columns and it gives you that's part of the distribution. After you downloaded Sphinx, you got the Sphinx API, which is documented fairly well. Uh, it's always a bit behind. They just released the uh, 0.98, and the documented version is still 9.7, uh, but I think they will update it in the next few days. You define your filters. That must be a group column in your definition. Um, the value of that filter, so the, the column tb is pub for us needs to be one. It's a boolean value for us because we can have hidden files. So I set the filter to one. I say do not give more, back more than 10,000 results. I still believe that when I type in something into Google and I see that you have got 20 million, million results for something, uh, it's much too much to cope with. So internally we just say, okay, more than 10,000 results uh, will not make sense. Probably even more than 1,000 results make sense. The good thing is that Sphinx will stop after the highest value you have here. So if you say 1,000, Sphinx will stop retrieving data and gives you uh, the results back much faster. Can you define your search phrase? You start the class with uh, define the class with a with that command. Uh, set the server values. Which server to ask? Good thing with Sphinx, um, you can cluster these servers as well. Say so, okay, use search server number. One, two, three. Uh, set the weights of the group columns. So in that example, all group columns have the same value for us. The artists, the uh, album title, the album descriptions all have the same importance. So if, it's, if it found Elvis either in the, in the artist name or in the album description, it has the same, same importance. You can tweak that as you like. Um, it has server match modes, um, like you know, probably from, from uh, standard search Boolean searches, like match all, match any means match uh, Elvis rock and roll, match any means uh, if, you, if it matches rock and roll or Elvis, give me these results. If you say match all, you just want to have documents where both parts of the search term are included. If you set up the query and it gives you the result object. Object? Yeah. No, it's, a, it's an array, sorry. It's an, um, it's an array and in the results you have uh, several keywords that are documented as well. So that array has matches, total found, um, and a few other keywords that you can access right after uh, the, the query was sent. So that's the example for the PHP. 
Does it scale? Hell yeah. <laughs> but I told you, you can define as many uh, Sphinx servers as you like and um, define that in the, in the config file as well. I have not tested uh, clustered Sphinx servers. I rely myself here on the, on the documentation and on the presentation of um, Alexander from, from the PHP conference in Moscow earlier this year. The, the slides, by the way, are also online and his explanations are much better than mine, I think. Um, but he's, he shows how to cluster uh, Sphinx servers by defining other members of that cluster in the config file and uh, distributing these indices over these clusters. So my conclusions for Sphinx, excellent choice. If you have problems searching MySQL, uh, speed issues, try it out. It's yeah, probably doable in less than two hours. If you're familiar with open source uh, products and you keep and you hold yourself along the, the config, just change the values of the config, go with the standard values, and you'll already see that it's much, much faster to use. Um, the scalability. If they're true, I think so. Um, uh, make that thing enterprise ready. I mean, uh, 100 million documents. If you do that with a Google search appliance, you might end up with $75,000. So it's worth to take a look into that tool. So thank you for watching that early Sunday morning. Um, do you have questions? It's is this only for delivering the data from memory, or, or is this also for scanning? Or I think it's, it's, um, it, it's, it had two purposes. It's the management of the index files. Uh, that means indexer is just gathering the information, and the, the real work of indexing and finding and, and putting the, the um, let's say, the IDs of the documents into the right place and say, okay, I found Elvis this and in, in these places uh, is part of the search daemon. So the indexer won't run without the search daemon. Yeah? As far as I could look into the, into the uh, project, I would say the indexer is just a reading tool and a pipe, a pipe to the search daemon. Okay. Yeah? Mm, how do we work around the problem with uh, live updates and things that's quite problematic? Updates. Yeah, so you, for, or for the index. Yes. So, yeah, for example, your customer deletes files. Yeah, then it's, it, you will find for two hours that deleted file. Okay. That's just how it is at the Every moment. Two hours you do a complete mm. re yeah, I, I know there is an incremental index possibility. Yeah. yeah. It's not very well. Oh, you tested it? Yeah. And? Uh, and who told me that he has to improve it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah, so we, um, it was the easiest way for us just to re-index everything. I mean, it's quite fast, it's less than five minutes, and uh, that's, that's quite okay. But you're right, we have that problem for about two hours. You, I mean, if you, our accounts are free, you just sign up, you can test it yourself. First, you upload something, it will not be there in the search index for two hours, and after you delete it, it will still be there for two hours. But I think that's okay for, because searching is important for us, for people to find the products, but um, the basic functionality of shopping and, uh, and buying the download, um, that's the, the core functionality that's still available without Sphinx. Oh. Yeah. Hmm? Two questions. Yeah. One is um, support because um, um, you know um, there's a, a company behind it to, to get support for it. Because it's also I don't know if it's a, if it's a company, or, uh, company or if it's just the coders. Uh, and But he's quite fast. I, I, I booked him for for two hours with some. I'm curious because you you showed that for PHP. Um, mm. Is it possible to? It's great. It sounds great. Mm. Um, is it possible to, to use it um, in MySQL? To use the search engine in yeah. MySQL as a as a um, as a for mesh again or something like that. Don't, yeah, the, don't, don't use it via PHP, just use it from MySQL uh, to, to connect to the email. I think they have an API for, for MySQL as well uh, to plug it in, right? It's a storage engine. A storage engine, yeah. Hmm? Great. Hmm? 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, for any of these uh, indexes, it's always important to know about the ratio between text size, what you index against, and index size. Do you have any practical experience for those two engines? Do you mean what the size of the of the directory what is? The ratio. Uh, how, how many percent of the what you have? No, for, for these statistics, I don't have any statistics. I'm, I'm sorry for that. So that's yeah. the question about scalability. Uh, yeah. If the size, the ratio is not good, then it's clear that it doesn't. Does anyone, do you know the ratio? No. Pretty important to restore it. Yeah. Yeah. It leads me to my second question. I was quite surprised that uh, the first Novo search uh, used databases as a backend. Do you have any idea? Why it seems like I think it's a, it was their approach to make it uh, clusterable. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But just I, I just know one the example at the moment uh, who uses uh, Monogro and that is Pirate Bay. They use Monogro. It just seems to me that this is not the right uh, data structure, if you will, for for storing the specific type of data that you're storing, index data. Mm -hmm. It's overkill to use a database. Database is designed for quite a yep. different. And yeah. that's why I was surprised at that. Data. Yeah, if, if you probably spire MP3 files or stuff like that, it's uh, probably the, lo uh, the wrong location to save these files in, in plops. If you are storing yeah. natural language text, mm -hmm. which compresses extremely well given the right data structures, mm -hmm. and you're storing in, in text fields in a database, which makes it several times the size of the byte string. Mm -hmm. For starters, and you're not sharing anything between related strings. Yeah. So I was surprised why the designers of that. But you're Ask the them. designer, so... No, no, we're, I'm, I'm just a user, and I'm probably not, a, not uh, the, the best at operator from hell, right. so I'm not very good at, at these things. I just took them because I had problems uh, and found these open source tools um, usable for to solve my problem. Yeah. yeah. My last question is on... Uh, I was quite interested to see that they have a ranking algorithm, which seems to be called popularity search. Mm -hmm. As you probably know, PageRank from Google is patented, so how do they... But I don't think in Russia. A lot of things are not patented in <laughs> Russia. Oh, you think they just copied it and changed the name? Pardon? Do you yeah. think they just copied and changed the name, or is it a different... No, I, I think uh, I found Monogo in, in uh, early 2000 on the MySQL.com, which is, I just looked yesterday just to confirm if it's still using um, Monogo. They shifted to the Google Search Appliance. But they've been using it for years, and that's how I found that tool. I think they've probably had that in the late 90s also. I mean, the, the amount of referrals to a document uh, is not a new idea. That, yeah, that's uh, scientific work. means how, how many times have I been cited uh, is important since the Middle Age, right? Yeah. But it might be quite interesting news if they found a way to work around the packet pattern and get a similar idea. They call mm. it popular to rank. Mm. That would be news for everybody. So that's why yeah. it's interesting. We're getting contact with them. I'm, I'm not sure if, they, if that's brand new or if they have a problem with that. But they, uh, they're around for uh, longer than Google are. Yeah. So thank you very much. Have a good day.